I truly believe that uh, this is a technology that will be with us from today till forever, as we have now a smartphones, as from the day the iPhone was presented, that was an iPhone moment. Now it's a chat GPT moment. We have to live with that. We have to embrace it and we have to introduce it in our life more or less. Okay. And yes, I will show you the examples. We will consider them, but in any moment, if you want to uh, introduce your example particular, you just can, uh, at any moment, uh, you can stop and we can, uh, this is a live session, it's live demo, I don't know the output neither, so we will do it, we will go through it all together, but there is one thing that I will show you, it's a bit of outline. So for today, it's very fast, I will explain you that what, this is a chat GPT, we will now ask the, the chat GPT about what is that. The outline of this presentation, okay? The outline will be, uh, I truly believe that there is a different and separate topics uh, that I would like to cover today. First, it's how we can better write the emails. So the suggestions for writing emails, uh, suggestions for the formulas and macros in the Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, that's something that we are used very often. And this is something that ChatGPT is very useful for. Uh, generation of the graphics on the plots of the different types. So analysis of the data that you probably need to analyze. Uh, the chat GPT can do this for you. And I would like to show you this. And uh, the text corrections and text enhancement is that if you, if you have some research text or uh, any kind of text that you wrote and you want to make it better in any sense, uh, chat GPT can do this for you. This is the kind of part of the personal productivity. The second block will be ChatGPT as an assistant for manager, product owner, scrum master, business analyst, this marketing, let's say, part. So the ChatGPT is very useful for these profiles. Once you need to define the product requirements, define the uh, outline, the user stories, and all the related with the definition of the product and work with the client, this is, I would like to briefly explain how the chat GPT can be useful for that, because we are, especially our department, it's very closely related with this planification of the final products for the different clients. And this is the something that is chat GPT as very, it's one of the best tools that can help. And finally, uh, the, fi the third block will be development and code refactoring for non-programmers is that when if you need to do some research which requires the programming part so normally what we are doing what or we what we did before it's we ask for some um, uh, support from the research institutes or from some uh, private uh, teams that actually uh, can do this development for you Nowadays, without knowing any line, any program language, without knowing any line of code, you can achieve the same result asking this chat GPT. And I will show you the example and I will show you uh, how, and we will go through it. Uh, this is, that will be the third main block. Finally, we will speak very shortly about the limitations of the chat GPT and um, there will be the open discussion at the end. After the end of each block or each sub block, we will have like the short break for the questions, for uh, some comments, but let us, uh, we are 15 minutes late. So if we go, to, if that's a lot of topics to be covered. So let's be efficient in saying that then we finally, at the end, we have also the time for the whole discussion. So then we probably discuss uh, all the topics all together at the end, okay? Let's go. So uh, basically, I um, I will write everything that will be online written with you. We'll see the output. Just brief introduction who for those who never work with ChatGPT. So this is the link we have to uh, follow, and this is the basically what we have to see. This is the the starting page of the ChatGPT, and then we have to click to try ChatGPT. Okay. And this is uh, the page of the login that we have to follow. Then it's required the login because then you have your own conversation with the chat GPT that then you can 
uh, download, then you can come back to this conversation. And then finally, uh, for this reason, you have to provide your... Uh, I have this link, the first link, because I'm using ChatGPT so much, because this is the first link that, that shows me. I see that at this computer, this user, it's not that much using this, but we put the uh, we put the credentials. You put the credentials since you know the credentials, please. <laughs> you have to re register. There are two types of registration, okay? There is free registration and the premium registration. I explain this for those because probably a lot of you know that, but this is kind of good to know. Uh, free registration gives you, it's, it's completely free, but there is so much users think that daily, uh, ChatGPT are accessing 10 millions of people daily. Accessing ChatGPT, it's a lot of people doing the request at the same time. So normally what happens is that usually the ChatGPT is saying to you, I am of the high capacity. High capacity means that it's out, it's out of scope. It's too much users asking now, speaking now with the ChatGPT. Please, let's think that for this amount of users, TikTok, which is one of the most popular uh, platform that we have now in the world, it needed one year to reach this level of the popularity that ChatGPT had in one week of usage. So we speak about something that is very popular nowadays. It's not something that I have my secret knowledge of this. This is of everyone. So uh, what gives you the premium access? Premium access by now costs you 24 euros, spent $24 per month. What gives you the premium access? So the premium access gives you two main uh, advantages. First is that even on the high capacity, you have access, uh, you have the stable access to the chat GPT. Why do you need that? For this reason, as I am now online, for the users who is waiting for my output, and if the chat GPT of high capacity, I can't do this talk, for example. So we have the premium account for that, but anyway, it's not working for another reason. <laughs> but at least it's not the, uh, the problem of the chat GPT, it's ready for us, okay? But the second thing, which is very important, that the chat GPT, that's a language model that has been trained. There are different language models. Think that it's different robots that are sitting and answering your request. There are different robots that are uh, less, um, um, that has less functionalities and let's say smaller in some sense, that are, like the performance is slightly worse. And there are some like the, uh, robots, they are much more um, educated and have much better results. So uh, what has the premium access is that you can access from there, not only for the chat GPT that is based on GPT-3 model, but actually from the one week, we have the chat GPT-4, which is the newest model, which has the more uh, even better performance that had GPT-3. So then the premium access gives you not only access to uh, uh, model GPT-3, but for the model GPT-4, which is better performance, better answers, faster answers. And uh, this is basically the advantages that it has for you. If you don't need it online, and if you don't need it, the high performance, you are good to go with that. Well, so first, it's very useful to speak with the chat GPT about the different topics. A lot of people just speaking with the chat GPT about they are, they are psychologues, they are uh, helping with the different stuff. Uh, what we start with, this is what I said, we have premium account, so we can select here the model. I've, I will do with the default because this is the same that you get with a free account. And so I don't want somehow to use the advantage that here would be the be better answers. No, here will be the same answer that everyone can get. Uh, I will do the copy paste from the question that I prepared because it's just faster, but uh, you will have the time to read it. First, what I want to do is that I want to ask the chat GPT to describe in two paragraphs of the technology behind the chat GPT. Why I'm saying that I need it, just, just, just not that fast, please stop. Uh, I need to ask to see the target auditory for this uh, answer. Chat GPT has the possibility to focus the answer uh, with the level of the specificity that you ask for. 
So if you say that your auditory will be the technology people or the mathematician or the people with the artificial intelligence background, the answer will be different, will be with the level of, te of technical details that, that are corresponding to the background of the person that you ask for. Here I said that since we are here in the university, we don't necessarily know everything about the uh, technology of the chat GPT, gives you the more general answer, uh, introducing the technology behind ChatGPT. It's based on the deep learning technique called Transformer. This is something what I present two weeks ago. And this is something that it's useful for uh, any topic. The advantage of ChatGPT that I can speak about ChatGPT, but I can't speak in, about any other topic. Uh, this is my, uh, this is my personal uh, specialization. But the advantage of ChatGPT that he can speak at the same level as I can about ChatGPT, he can speak about almost everything or about everything. So this is the advantage of that. I can judge that he do pretty good job on that, but you can all also judge that, uh, judge that in another any another general question, he will do also pretty good job. Go ahead, emails. So uh, once you start the conversation, the conversation appears here and the chat GPT gives the name of this conversation. So the name you can change and you can also delete this conversation as you want to. Uh, you can keep this conversation if you want to keep this, uh, keep this answer, if you want to use this answer and you can also regenerate response uh, if you want it to be different. But you also can tell it, make it shorter, make it larger. Uh, provide me more specification about that point. All of this you can do, okay? Let me, uh, let me start the new chat because I want it to be specific for the emails, uh, for the generation of the emails, okay? And let me say that where I am. So, here. so I want to say something that, that um, I am a professor in the university, I can write with the mistakes and I can do this with the proposal because then the chat GPT understands under certain level. I mean, you don't need to put a lot of mistakes, okay? But if you do some mis mistypo, it's pretty okay. And uh, I want you to act as my uh, email assistant. So first, what I do is to introduce the task for the chat GPT and define his role for this conversation. Once I did that, uh, chat GPT more or less knows uh, his um, main task for all this conversation. Let me explain. The conversation is limited. Don't think that this conversation can, can, um, can lead endlessly. This conversation is limited. And you can start as much conversation as you want to, but in one conversation, so the chat has limited memory to remember all that you are saying, because that's what he's doing. He's remembering all the conversation, okay? So this conversation is somehow can reach to this limit. The limit is relatively big, but just for you to know. So he's ready to help us. Okay, first, what can I do as the teacher assistant? What I can do, I will do the copy past because uh, that's easier. I need to write an email to students informing about the exam rules. So I need to somehow generate the rules for my exam that I will do with my students. Uh, normally what we do, we have them prepared or we need to write the email in English, okay? If you ask this, this is the prompt of one sentence, in two seconds, you have the email generated with the subject, with the, uh, with the introduction, with the proposal of the exam rules that you can obviously specify more rules that you want to introduce. You can copy past and, all, and edit this email, but it's pretty okay. I mean, it's pretty good and it makes sense. Uh, cheating and plagiarism, exam materials, exam duration. This is how you would do this, but better, okay? <laughs> this is just, you are good to go with that. It's pretty okay to send it already to your students. And it's pretty awesome. I mean, for writing this email by hand, even if you have some template, it takes much more time than it takes now, 
Okay. Once again, there are yeah there are two possibilities of no if the text is written by ChatGPT. Okay, you can copy this text, you can put it in in ChatGPT and ask, did you write this text? Okay, and ChatGPT will answer you, yes, I did it. No, in any in any other chat, in any other chat. But if you slightly, uh, but uh, and also you have the AI classifier by the same company. So the same company provided you the uh, tool that you can put the text, and then it tells you what is the probability that it is written by ChatGPT. There are two possibilities of knowing that. There is also two that you can take this text, put in this tool, it rewrites it, slightly changes the wording that it's not anymore written by ChatGPT. And also, if you touch a bit this email, I mean, you put your personal name, the signature, you'd slightly, slightly change um, whatever like content that you have, there is no possibility to, uh, to discover it. Moreover, I, uh, I would never check any email for the chat GPT generation. What is the reason for doing that? Uh, obviously, if the, the important is the content of this email, you know, not the way how it was generated. This is, um, for me, kind of obvious. This is emails. Yeah, but, but it's just more pedant. What is the Did point? I answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, but mm -hmm. I, I've got an ethical reservation because here we say for example you should avoid plagiar avoid plagiarism to the student and then we are using we're cheating here no? do, you see, do you see my point no no, no. <laughs> i mean uh, once again this is not cheating we are not at the exam we are at our daily task and do you know how many times it takes for us our daily task to writing the emails so it's kind of in my work, for example, it's at least two hours per day. I'm spending writing the emails. If I can use some tool that helping me to, to share the same, uh, I mean, this is some message that I want to share. If there is something tool that helps me to share this, mes the, this message, not like to substitute my authentication by uh, introducing some another message. This is kind of um, the same as I would use the, um, translator to translate from I'm Ukrainian to translate from Ukrainian to English. If they don't use translator, do it by yourself as as good as you can do it. Because otherwise, it's cheating. It's not cheating. It's a tool that I'm using because I'm the foreigner. This is I mean, but this is the discussion out of this topic. Let's let's keep it till the end, okay? I'm I'm showing you, and then you decide if you want to use it or not. Okay? Let's agree on that. I have an email from the student that says that he's not agree with my evaluation. This is all the information I'm giving, okay? This is my particular situation and I need to answer this email. This is the only thing, uh, uh, the only thing I can ask uh, the chat GPT. Sure, I can help you with that. Could you please provide me more details about the situation? For example, could you let me know the reason why the student disagrees with your evaluation and so on? So he asked, but okay, what do you want me to do? Just tell me. And I am telling him, so I have it prepared. It's just not for taking our time. This is once again, it's example. It's completely um, synthetic example that can happen. So the thing is I put, he complains that the task, the tasks were much more difficult than he expected which is, I mean, um, very, um, uh, very generous comment uh, and ask for another round of the exam or normalizing the marks to the best work among the students, uh, um, not the maximum possible mark, which is, and not the maximum possible mark, which is 10. I mean, what he is asking is that if the maximum, the student got maximum seven, so the seven goes to 10 and then another normalized to that point, okay? I explained this very badly with the point that um, somehow what he understood from subject, subject, answer. So this is not the subject that is my email, it's answer for your email with disagreement with the evaluation. So the details here is it's, completely insane. And then he said, dear student name, 
Thank you for your email regarding your disagreement. I understand that you feel the tasks were more difficult than you expected, and you would like to request another round of exam. I would like to assure you that I take all feedback seriously and appreciate your concerns. I would never say that. I would say no. I mean, no, this is my ability of the empathy to this student. You see how good is written that. I mean, I'm impressed. It is, is, oh, while I understand your request for another round, I regret to inform you that it's not possible to grant your request. I mean, obviously, ones can agree that it can be right better. It can eliminate it some part, but the output I would like to encourage you to review the feedback provided and use it as an opportunity for growth and learning. Thank you for your understanding, best, best regards. This is, this is the pol very polite way to say, no, this will not happen, not in, not in my course. This is what I would probably say, which was very aggressive form of saying that. But this is somehow, and you see, this is the first round of generation. Then you can ask for more stuff. You can ask for more details. You can make it as good as you want to. But the thing is that in two seconds, we have something which is very good on the fly, okay? This is why I'm here to provide you more examples like that. Well, another part, uh, what, what we can probably face as, and I, fa I am facing this a lot, that I need to report that I made a mistake. I needed to report it to, my, um, uh, to the head of my department, to the dean, to whatever. I mean, this is, the, this is the something that I put it just for the example. So I need to report to my uh, members that I did some errors, okay? And I needed to write avoiding uh, like, let me, let me put here, please write it. Uh, av avoiding to say that the error was made, but emphasizing, this is emphasizing the word, I suppose, that the error was resolved. So what I want to say is that I don't know how to write the email in the sense that I want to say, yeah, I did the, I did the mistake, but it is resolved. But I want you to write the email in such a way that you emphasize that we resolved something that was made, okay? Because this is a, it's a complex, it's a language. You can put this, and I am, uh, since I am the foreign, especially in English, if you write in the foreign language, the email, to write this and to provide this whole sensation for the email, it's not that easy, okay? So are we ready for that? Okay, I'm writing to provide an update. I would like to apologize for the delay in the response from the corresponding authority. However, I am pleased to inform uh, that the issue has not been resolved. There was a minor issue with the document that was submitted, which caused a delay in the response. However, I'm happy to report that we have now corrected the error and resubmitted the document. We are now awaiting the response and we will keep you updated for as a final time. I understand the importance of this document uh, for the purpose and the impact that any delay may have. Please rest assured that we are doing everything we can do to, ins to ensure that the process move forward as quickly as possible. I mean, this is the message that you are sharing is that everything has resolved. Yes, we had the blocked issues but it's resolved and it's so cool that, and obviously you can ask, write me this in Spanish and he will write it in Spanish, write me this in Catalan, in any language that you want to do this. I mean, I can do it for you. Can, can you write this in Spanish? Por supuesto. And I'm not speaking Spanish, so I can't evaluate the, the level of the, there is obviously in, in other languages uh, different from English, we have different, uh, the specific probably words that you probably as a native speakers, you will not use, but it's much faster to reduct the email that write it from zero. I'm spending sometimes hours thinking of high, and I, I'm starting with hola, 
adios and so uh, and i'm sitting with that like for one hour this is something that you can start with okay um then something which is useful also with the email and then we will finish that something that you have to say no something that is asking for you and you have to say no uh, chat gpt can help you to uh, say no in the polite form so for example i'm asking to provide my room for meeting next week write the polite email to refuse it unfortunately i have other commitments during the time of the meeting and my room will be not available for use i apologize for any inconveniences may cause i would be happy to assist you in finding another suitable venue for the meeting please let me know if you would like any recommendations or if i can be of any further assistance I mean, my message is clear. Uh, saying no, it's um, especially depends on the person that you have to ref referring to. It can be easier or more difficult. But here you have the, uh, the thing that can help you to do that. The last thing, what I am particularly very, very uh, um, much um, so I'm the person, the referent of the of, of this situation. I'm very emotional and I, I use an, an appropriate language a lot, but also I use a poor English with limited vocabulary. I need you to take it as an input and convert it to the polite version. Steven, you are useless asshole. Uh, we are behind the schedule because of your stupid invoicing was done wrong. You'd better sort it out. I'm not speaking like this, okay? And this is a joke, obviously. But let me uh, let me uh, reformulate it. We want to say some very drastic message, uh, and we don't know how to say it politely. So this is the way, and this is the tool. And then it even tells you, I'm sorry to hear that you're feeling emotional about that situation. Obviously, I am. I mean, we are out of schedule and this is here some invoicing that it's um, that it has to be done. But you see, dear Stephen, I'm writing to express my concerns regarding the invoicing process. I understand that mistakes can happen and so on. So do you understand the level that I, 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 I said, like, just I'm on fire. Just this, this, uh, this person can do his work well. Please tell him that. And this email, it's kind of can save you uh, your relationship with this uh, dear Stephen, and it can help you uh, kind of, at least in the languages that you are not the native speaker, which is the English first of all, this is very, very handy. And we finish with the emails. I mean, this is kind of, uh, this is the thing that I prepared. Uh, if you have any questions here or any emails that you want to try later on, we will keep it till the end. Okay, so more things to more things to go. I start the new chat, and uh, uh, I follow with the Excel. How many of you use the uh, Google Sheets or Excel in your computer? How many of you? How often? All of you. I am the programmer. So I am trying to avoid to use the Excel as much as I can do in my life, okay? Because I don't know. I, I don't know any program in Excel, and this is my fault. I mean, if I need to write any formula, I'm just stuck with that. So what we can ask the chat GPT also is that, can you be my assistant in um, um, writing an uh, Excel? And Marcus? Yes, uh, sure, he, he, he always says yes. This is the advantage of the ChatGPT. He can't say no because we are paying for that $24 per month. So obviously he can help us. How, okay? This is the question, how? First of all, uh, I don't know how to do formulas and formulas in Excel, it's something that is for me complicated. okay? I don't know how to do that. I always got the error in that. What, and I go to the internet and there is some formulas, I copy past them and they are not working and this is a disaster. So what I, what I can suggest you or, or, or something that I found very useful is that 
look, this is very big, but let me. I can provide explicit instructions for the chat GPT of the formula I want him to generate. And he will generate me the formula for my data. So I have, I tell him, I have an Excel with columns B, C, and D. So the instructions has to be precise. You can't say generate me the formula to sum up. You can also do that. And he will also do that. But the more complex formula you need, all the logic you have to explain, okay? This is the, this is the cue. Uh, I have an Excel with the columns B, C, and D. The columns B has to have values all or any. The column C has to have values coincide all, coincide any, or not coincide. The column D has to have values 0, 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100%. Write me the formula that I should use for the column E that will follow the following conditions. And then I provide the conditions that I need for my particular use uh, to apply um, according to the values I provided to B, C, and D. Uh, and so this is the formula, okay? This is the formula. I can copy this formula and put whatever I do. This is the, for you see that this is a code that I can copy. It. And then there is more or less the explanation of how this was generated. But um, moreover, what I asked, what I can ask him to do, what I found very useful is that generates me five lines of data for columns B, C. Let's do for the following, for the, all of them, B, C, D, and E, to be able to check your formula. You see, this is the example of the data that I gave him the instructions and he generates me the data for my Excel without, I, I'm not giving my access to my data. I can substitute my data. So I don't need to provide any personal data. My, I can give you him just example and he will generate everything for me, okay? So let us check a bit the condition, the column E. So what I said, the value one, if the column B is all, so do we have here column B is all, so we have here the all is this and this one, okay? If the column B is all, the column E should be one if the column C is different from not coincide and the column D has any value and zero in any other case. This is my condition, which is complex. I mean, this is complex condition. If I need to write this formula by myself, mm, I don't know, it's a lot of ifs here. So, uh, Column B all, column C is different from, the column C is different from not coincide, which is in my case is coincide all, which is the condition is correct. Column D has any value. So the value of column E has to be one. And it's correct. I mean, according to my condition, at least this we, we checked. And believe me, I checked them all. So I, I went prepared to this meeting, no need to check it all. He did it very well, okay? So you can copy and paste this data into your Excel sheet to test the formula. We obviously can do. And this is what I did for you. So I have the Excel here, which I want to share with you. Um. <clears throat> So this is, this is the Excel. This is exactly what I copied. And this is, the, this is the value of the formula he provided me. I just copy paste the formula. This is the value that I expect. This is the value that provides me formula, okay? So this is the copy paste of the formula and it's incredible how it's done. I mean, it's really inc incredible. Also, what I, I'm going a bit faster. Do you have any questions till that about the Excel? Yeah, go ahead. Can we do the same for Stata commands? Can we do the same for, for... Stata, Stata commands? Yeah, yeah, but mm, let's do it. Yes, yes, you can do. Yes, yes, for sure, you can do. Um, so formulas, this is one thing that is very handy. 
Another thing that let me just show you, okay, because of the limit of the time, I will show you. And then um, this is, I have the, um, the data generated and it's also generated by, by ChatGPT. This is just for, uh, this is just for the illustration because I've copied it. So we can generate any kind of the data that, that you want to, okay? And this is, this is kind of super cool. This is what I, uh, this is what I provide him. Look, generates me 20 lines of data for column market that can be a name of any country without repetitions and column revenue that will be a random number between uh, 10, uh, 100 million and uh, oh, I, I suppose it's 1 milliard, suppose it's a lot of zero, I, a lot of zeros here. And this is the data that you can use to make any examples, to testing, to show to your students. It's not real data, but it has no authority, uh, this kind of this, um, uh, any authority. You don't have to ask for the access. No, it's kind of the data that you can use for whatever reasons you want to use it. And you can copy past this data into your Excel sheet to use your analysis. This is what I did, I mean, this is exactly what I did here. I copied this data. I had it slightly different because it's, I, it's um, randomly generated. Then I asked, can you calculate and provide me the uh, formula for the total revenue? So I didn't ask him precisely the formula. I can, how can I calculate total revenue in Excel? To calculate, you can use the sum, select the cell when you want to display the total revenue. And this is the formula that he provides. And, uh, and he provides you the instructions how you can get the total revenue. So what I didn't tell him, provide me the formula to sum up the values. I tell him, provide me the total revenue. So he knows that the total revenue, it's a sum of all the revenues that we had. And then he provides you the formula for the total revenue. So it's all, not only the knowledge of how to do the, uh, the summation of the cells, but it's also the knowledge of what is the total revenue. Not that much, but at least. But what is cool things also to see here is that you can also ask him how to make the plot, how to plot it, okay? Because if you don't know, uh, if you are not very handy that uh, how to write the, the um, how to plot it. So then you can ask, uh, then you can ask the chat GPT to help you with the instructions, how you can do that, okay? I want to make the bar plot in Google Sheets because I use the Google Sheets. This is slightly different syntaxes that you have in Excel. For this, I'm specifying that this has to be Google Sheets. And I said to you, how can I do that? I need to plot the revenue per country. I don't know, I have no idea. That's the first time I see the Google Sheets. How can I do that? Select the data range that you want to include in your bar plot. Go ahead and go through these steps. And then I did this and you really got this. Once you are satisfied with your chart, click insert, <laughs> okay? You can tell me this, you can find in the internet. For sure, 100%. But this is, yeah, it's not only the one link about the Excel, it's about everything. This is an advantage. This is one thing, one particular thing that can, it can do, and it can do a lot of different stuff. This is the main advantage that I want to share with you. And the last example with the Excel is the following. For example, I have two columns, amount due with the values 90 and 100, and the column email with the values Klimchuk Tanya, which is my email, and Tanya Klimchuk with my another email. I want to write an email from Google Sheet to each email with a subject amount due to be paid with the body. You need to pay an amount X in which X corresponds to the value of the amount due. Uh, how can I do that? I want to send the emails from the Excel, okay? I have never did that before. I don't know how to do that. I mean, I don't know how to do that. To send an email from Google Sheets, you need to, to use this code. And I said, oh my God, I have, I have never used this code before. 
I mean, what is that? I mean, what is that called? <laughs> where, have, where should I do that? And then it gives you the instructions, what is exactly the procedure that you have to follow and what will be your output, okay? And this is what is he telling to you that you have to copy this code, clicking here, your code is copied. We touched anything, okay, here. We go to, my, to our Excel, which is the third example. Here I have the amount due, here I have the email, okay? And then it's, this is true that it's written in the instructions. And then you have go to the up scripts, which is written in the instructions. And you have to put your code here. This is the code that provides me by the chat GPT. I didn't touch any line, like any line of that code, okay? And then you have to save it. And then you have to click execute, which is written in the instruction, okay? And then it says to me, information email sent to Klimchuk Tanya and information email sent to Tanya Klimchuk, which is my working email. Let's go ahead and check my working email, okay? Which is my private working email, but I can share it. And this is amount due to be paid. And here you can, here you can see it. This is, this is my, this is my email that arrived to me just now from the Excel written by ChatGPT. I have no idea about the, this code provided, okay? I mean, I do, obviously, but let us assume that we have no idea how to send the email. And uh, this is the code it provides and it's working from the very, how much time did, did it take for me to generate all of that, to make all of this procedure? So one minute we spend. And this is awesome, okay? Is that cool? Do you consider that cool? I do, very much. Well, now, this is all, okay? This is about emails. Now, let's continue. Uh, now we have also plot assistance, okay? So the graphics you need to make the representations of your data um, of your data or you don't have the data or you somehow need to introduce some pictures how you generate these pictures distribution of your data bar plot uh, diagrams uh, these kind of things how you normally do that from the excel this is one way uh, or from the Python, from any programming languages, from the R. Um, so I don't know, whatever tools you use. You, uh, there are a lot of, plenty of tools, okay? So there are plenty of possibilities. ChatGPT, it's also one of the possibility to do that, okay? How? So once again, I'm always starting to tell him what I am going to speak with him in this chat. You can avoid this step, you can follow me. This is just my particular, I'm not the prompt engineer. This is my particular advice for you, but you can keep this advice or you can don't use it twice as you want to, okay? I, I want you to help me with um, creating plot. Sure, I'd be happy to help. Sure, you'd be happy to help me. You don't have another option. Um, first of all, and this is very useful, uh, that you don't know how to start. And you just tell him, I have some numerical and categorical features and I want to draw a graph. Can you help me by showing examples of the built-in data sets? What does that mean? What does that mean? I am the newbie and I don't have the data, okay? I don't have my own data, but I want to see how I can create the graphs once I have the data. They're existing the built-in data sets. What does it mean? It's an open source data sets, which has some particular features. The very famous one is the Titanic data sets, for example. This is a list of the people uh, who've been in the Titanic ship. Huh? 
And that was that they have the data, they have the women, men, so they have the different features of this. And then you can do different plots about how many women against men uh, have been on that uh, ship on the day of, of uh, the Titanic sank. And then also you can do the distribution, how many of women uh, survived uh, in comparing with how many men survived. So oh, normally this data set, they are open access for any reasons. Normally it's like for the researchers and for the programmers. Also this, my airport's connected for some reason. So what uh, ChatGPT has, it provides you the code how to access these built-in data sets in one click. You don't need to do like basically nothing. You just want to need to, you need to copy this code. And then that's true that it provides it in Python language because I am programming with the Python. But you can ask him explicitly that if you're programming with the R or you want to do this with the MATLAB or with whatever thing that you prefer, you go with that. I'm giving you examples with the Python because I can test them. In order to test them, I have prepared for you the notebook in which I have the generated output. So this is the code that provides me the, um, uh, that provides me the um, chat GPT. And then I run this code and this is the output of this code that it just generated. So this is the output of this code. So he provide me, let me, uh, let me once again show you. He provides me several examples. So this is the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and it's a different data sets. And it's also the explanation here. So you can read finally all this explanation. But what is cool is that you can open your Python redactor I know that it's kind of not trivial, but you can you can uh, afford to have this Python reductor. And then this is the output of the plots, the different types of plot that you have here, okay? This is the examples of the real data set. This is a tips data set. It, it means uh, how many tips of the total bill you gave Based, based on sex, this is male or female, who gave more tips, males or, or women or men. This is the EDS data set. And so it also has an explanation of these data sets. So this is basically the plot that generates on the fly all the data that it's, you even don't own and you have never known about that, okay? This is somehow cool style, stuff that you can start with. Uh, moreover, a part of that, you can tell him, okay, I need these pictures. I need to ask, I have asked him to GPT. I want to save a plot as PNG file. Sure, you can save plot. And here it gives you the example of the, any plot that you have. And this is a line with the comments, save plot. So moreover, he gives you the comment here. So he comments this line to you that if you copy this code, if you pass it, if we copy this code, okay? I copy this code, then I go to my, this plot reductor, I just put it online, okay? So we go here, if we go here, if we run this, so it takes a while, okay? And so, this is the plot. I mean, it can kind of generate, it's any plot that, that, that is the simplest one. But then I ask, save the plot as a PNG file. So what I have to do is that I have to go here. This is my document in which I have prepared this everything. And it's my plot PNG, which is saved for me, okay? And it's my plot PhD, which is my plot PNG which is the name that I put here, okay? Without knowing any programming language, I just copy this code, I put it here, I have the image and I saved the, saved the image. It cost me 20 seconds to do, okay? Obviously, I am the programmer in Python. I do understand that the lines make sense. And we also have kind of, there is not written here, please destroy my computer. And I just copy paste it, I put it, but our computer is not that uh, stupid 
also. It not allows you to execute the command that can crash your system or they can put you any malware. So uh, I truly believe that you can copy this level of generated code without any fear and you can play with it at the level that you want to, okay? This is very simple example, but I find, find it very powerful if you want to, okay? Something which is interesting about plots um, that I wanted to show you is, let me, let me go to ChatGPT. It's not that one, no, no, let me find when I am in, I'm here. Let me put the message. Uh, sometimes we have the data set over a long period of time, okay? And when the first plot we are normally doing is that plot me everything, every data point. And finally, what you have, it's a kind of like all the mess of the data and you can see nothing, okay? What you can ask ChatGPT is that you can say, look, make me a rolling average on a time interval. Is that, it means that provides me the, um, the uh, reduce the number of the data, point, data points by keeping the mean, by keeping the idea of this, um, uh, the context of this data. And this is something that costs you to implement because then you have to take the time interval. Let's say you have the interval of 10 years, then you have to go month by month, take the mean of your data and substitute it as a data point, which you can ask the chat GPT, the chat GPT can do this for you. It's a complicated stuff, it's a bit mass here, but you probably like anyone once probably will need this in your life. And this is what can you do? And more or less I'm asking him him, I tell him, this is my friend, yes. And um, I ask him to provide me the example of both and provide me more or less with some data set, which is open data set with free sorts. And he said that I provide you with the built-in air passengers data set in R. And so this data set contains the monthly totals of international airline passengers. This is the example that you can do. Uh, this is another example that you can do. You copy it. Uh, this will create a line plot of rolling average of the data with a window and so on. So when it goes to my plot, this is the plot that he provided. I don't think it very clearly. So I asked another data set and this is another data set that he provided. And here I, I, I do see very clearly. Here you have the scatter plot of a lot of data. When I ask for rolling average, this is the more or less the output. I mean, you don't need to implement anything. You just need to have the idea what you have to get. Do you understand my point? And this idea you have to transmit clearly to ChatGPT and he provides you the instructions. And this is the, uh, so you don't need to look for the instructions. This is the way to get the instructions and then you execute them and this is your output. You can save it, you can use it. And this is more or less all with that. And unfortunately, we don't have the time for the questions. We will do the questions at the end because we have more cool stuff to do. This is kind of a bit complicated stuff. Now, let's do a bit of communication part. That's what I promised with uh, the project manager, product owners, crew master, and that part. It's a bit different. So this, all of that that I showed before, that was for our particular usage as the users. So we have the data for analyzing of the data for our personal needs. We also can have different roles and especially our students, they finally, uh, they will arrive to their work and they will have different tasks. Among them will be a lot of communication with the, their clients or defining their products needs, defining the, um, uh, the roadmap of the product, defining a lot of these stuffs, uh, stuff that I'm obviously not an expert. I'm not, uh, but he's an expert. <laughs> in that and he can help in, in this part too. It, it, once again, it's not a substitution, it's a help for the student, for us as the teachers, 
as the professors to in order to generate properly the task for the students that requires this support and because this support can be really useful can be this is the enhancement of our knowledge it's not a substitution of our knowledge by any mean so what can we do we start i'm a product owner because why not i'm a product owner and school master in my company I want you to act as my assistant. And you see, this is a name of my chat, which is automatically assigned that you finally can go through all the conversations that we have. I had hundreds of conversations in my chat GPT. You can eliminate them, you can keep them, you can have the plugin that then, then moves this conversation to your notes, to whatever you prefer. This is super powerful stuff. Okay, he's, he's ready to help. What I want. <clears throat> um, this will be a bit of text here for this I'm copying okay I need to create a user platform where users will be able to book their medical visits this is example okay this is my product this is what I want to develop I have three types of user and this is my this will be my users uh, this is the this is it's not real example. Let me do that. This is kind of the example that uh, just for the illustration purposes. So I have customer service representatives, management, and the regular users. Okay, this is my three. Uh, this is my three types of users that I define my platform for. Um, so and then I define the instructions what I want to be included. Right here. I'm uh, here. Am I? So. A uh, regular user login with their email, the phone and the passport, then this, uh, the customer support, the customer service and the management, they are logging with their Google profile. Then regular user can uh, book the appointment with the customer service, which probably uh, customer service here, it's probably the medical staff, okay? And the a regular user, it's a regular user. And then the a user can indicate a uh, specific person that he wants to make the appointment. He can indicate the date and time. Uh, then the medical user has to accept or modify the reservation. When the reservation accepted or modified, the user gets notified by email or SMS, depends on his login type. This is the functionality that I expect from my platform. And this is what clients ask you for. When you define this is as a product, the medical platform of uh, interaction between the users and the, the, the doctors, this is a product that and, the, and you have to define all these functionalities and this you have to provide to ChatGPT or you also can ask him to provide this for you. But the more precise you want him to be, the more instructions that you have to do. And this is a, the example from my colleague that I like very much because later on you will see the kind of how cool he will explain everything for you so uh, the doctor can planificate the appointment directly for user user can ask for the specific doctor and for the appointment management is is the admin who can provide the access to everyone this is more or less what i am telling to chat gpt understood he said understood in a moment I didn't. I mean, I need some time to understand. Okay, he didn't. To create the user platform, you need to follow these general steps. So first, he gives some instructions already to you. I didn't ask for any. Okay, but he already did me something. This is his advantage or disadvantage. He always tell you something. Okay, he always suggests you something. I didn't ask. He asked for some specific requirements, as you mentioned. Here are some additional suggestions. So he, I mean, he started. To explain me everything but what i want to actually is i want a descriptive task from him of the technical task that uh, the development team should execute in order to complete the first user story so probably we need to ask for the user story first this is let me can you provide 
a list of user stories first, and then we ask for the task. Sure, this is a user story. What is the user story? I mean, it's main functionalities that has to have the platform, but from the from the client point of view, you can't say that the client uh, that you will send the request from the API from your server to some another API to the Amazon Web Service. This is a not user story. The user story is that the user will be notified by the email. This is a story, and then the technical task, which is behind that, that has to be the communication that someone is programmed to do that, okay? So the user stories is basically who the product owner who is defining that. And this is explicit explanation. I want to be able to cancel an appointment that I have booked so that I can free up the slot for someone else to use. This functionality has to be implemented. I mean, the first one, because later on, as a user, I want to be able to log into the platform using my email phone and password so I can access the appointment booking functionality. This is what I want to do. This is a small functionality. What it needs from me to implement it, okay? Let us take a look. We ask ChatGPT, please write me the technical task to be implemented. You need to create a user da uh, database, implement a login play page, implement a password hashing, implement session management, implement error handling, implement password reset functionality. It's so complex, his answer. It's so complete that this is basically, you can copy past it, you can go to the uh, meeting with your client, you can tell, this is what my team should do, my development team should do. This is all this task. We need to evaluate how many time we'll need to do that and how many money you should pay. But at least if you forgot about the, to testing the logging functionality, this is at least 100 hours that will cost your user at least 10,000 euros. So this is the money that the money gap that you will forgot as a product owner. But the chat GPT is not forgetting that. He has this knowledge and he can help you to have it covered. This is kind of something that, that is very handy. And what we can do is we go to the details, the level of the details as much as we want to. So I need, I said to him, please write me the specific, um, the specific explanation for the each, um, uh, for for the each uh, for the each task of the first story, give me the, the more explanation, and, and he does, and he will stay uh, some time to doing that, and finally, and I will finish with that. Finally, I need to send the user guide for the user the document. It's official documentation that need to you can share with your client, and you say it in one click write me that documentation for the user guide. Obviously, you can say that there is a limit in the prompt and you will see that it somehow it will, it will stop the, the prompting because it has a limitation. But if you, if you split your, um, uh, if you split your requests, you will get as many information as you need. And this is the advantage of that. And this is the complete user guide. Then you can copy you can pass and you can leave with that. Finally, you can also generate the data for your platform, for testing, for doing and so on. So what I want to do is that I ask him, look, I need to tabulate the data for my testing, for my whatever. I need to have my, my I need to create you, generate you the data for, the possible users, so that will be the patients of this medical platform, with their emails, with their phone numbers, with the password, with the note, which is I indicate that it has to be Lorem Ipsum notes, with the Google token, and with another stuff that you want to achieve here. And I said that I prefer that the majority of the names will be the woman names. So, and he generates me the data 
and I can use and I can copy past it to my Excel or whatever. And this is my dat my data that has it's it's not uh, real. It has no any copyrights. You can use it uh, for any testing. It's not the production data, obviously, but um, you can start with that on the fly. And yeah, this is basically we have half an hour and then I have two topics to cover. Um, and I suggest you that we select one topic probably because uh, I need probably 10 minutes more and that you have times for the discussion. Uh, I would like to show you something. Uh, so the text uh, um, assistant, we will probably cover, we'll have another session. Let me show you the coding assistant, which is uh, because it's some topic which is, rela uh, which is related to the research that we are doing in week. And I suppose that will be also useful for the people who are here now currently. And um, I want to have these 10 last minutes for that. But uh, these kind of talks, they can, uh, they can lead for hours and hours because there are a lot of uh, applications. And there are lots of examples that you can do. So let me the 10 minutes more and more your time. I know that it's very intense that you're probably not following, but I suggest you, this is the last um, effort that we have to do, which I promise you will be interesting. So uh, what I suggest you to, um, to follow me is that I need you. So some uh, sometimes we need to um, make some analysis from the web pages, from the data, from uh, from the web pages, from the Amazon data, okay, from the Twitter data, from any website that you have the information there for any reason. So a lot of people do that. For this, you need to do the web scrapping. You need to take the data from there, okay, from these web pages. That's not uh, trivial to do. Uh, manually, it takes a lot of time to do. Uh, what you can try to do is that you can try ChatGPT to ask for this data. Can you generate me 100 entries of tabulated data as in UK Trustpilot, which is the web page of the reviews that, that now we will see, it, as a cut dealer session that contains user reviews about the specific car dealer company you say that to ChatGPT, and let's say what he's telling us. Sure, this is data. If we go to the, to the trust pile of data that we wanted to have, it 100, I mean, I'm past here. I mean, this is, I need to stop generation because we will stay here for 10 minutes. Um, stop, stop, please. Yeah, it's, it's enough, it's enough. So let me or just one moment show you the, uh, the web page. <clears throat> so this is the web page that we are looking for. This is the internet connection. Okay. 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 So this is the company. This is, the three, this is the review that we asked for, okay? So this is the title of the review. This is the text of the review. This is the data, okay? And this is the, uh, the um, evaluation, the ranking of the elevation from the one to five. This is the data that I asked him to provide because I write the explicit instruction. I want using name being English name and surname, mostly man. Title of review between five of 10. It doesn't mean that it's real reviews from this site. It just means that it's synthetically generated by ChatGPT. It's not real reviews. It's just like in that page, okay? But its name is not real. Its title is not real, but the title, and moreover, I put here, I want you to maintain the title, the body and the ranking coherent. I don't want here to put the excellent experience via the terrible review and then the ranking of three. I want all of three, these to be coherent, okay? I mean, if this is terrible, this is terrible, this is terrible. You do understand, yes, it's, it's clear. This is what I want you. 
and he generated me this. And this is some data that I can start to do my research. Which research can I do? I can do this, uh, the, um, uh, the semantic analysis. I can do the sentimental analysis of the reviews. Uh, can I do that? For sure. Can ChatGPT do that for me? For sure. You put it here and you tell. Can you select five first entries and add the column named sentiment analysis? The value of the column should be negative, neutral, or positive, depends on how you classify the title and the body of the review overall sentiments. You go ahead. Okay. And this is the data which it generates for you, and now we will revise it. Terrible experience. I had a terrible experience. Sentimental analysis negative. What before? What uh, the effort that if we want to have this analysis, we need to do web scrapping of the data. We need to analyze this data. We need to have the code, which or some kind of tool that provides you sentimental analysis. Now the chat GPT provides you the sentimental analysis, which is coherent. I mean, this is positive because it's a great experience. This is a highly recommended positive. This is negative and I mean, then you can play with the data. And then it can give you sentiment analysis. And then it, it explains to you how he can, how we use, how we, how he defined this sentimental analysis. Okay. This is cool. It's awesome. Then you say, no, I don't believe you. I don't want this. And this, you do it wrong. I want to do this by myself. Chat GPT can help you with that. What you can do is that you can write, write the Python code that takes 1000 reviews in text format and returns a sentiment value for each review that can be negative, positive or neutral. Enter. Sure, here is the Python code. This is the Python code that he generates for you. So it's because of the internet he's some, sometimes stuck. But, and then he explains all the libraries that you need and why you need them. And he gives you precise, the explicit instructions, what is going on in this code, okay? You don't understand, you just copy this code. You just copy this code. You just go to the Python um, uh, notebook that you have. You don't have, I do have it for you. This is the code. This is the reviews that I prepared. This is a four reviews. You can ask ChatGPT and he will generate you four reviews, whatever. This is the code that he provides. And this is the code that I just executed, okay? This is the code that I copied and executed. It's not magic here, it's his code. And so you had the positive, negative, positive, positive, and this is the output that you receive from your data, your reviews, okay? This is 1,000 reviews and you do this with the code, okay? So here is read in the text file containing the reviews. I can ask, rewrite the code, rewrite the code uh, that in order to read txt file, it takes a list of four Sorry, because I don't see of four reviews. Because I have them as a list. Sure. And he rewrites you initialized, whatever. And then he takes the list. This is the reviews. You see, he generates you the reviews. You don't need to create this list. And then he iterates through them and then he do his work. Okay, done. You are done. You copy this and you are done with that. Cool. Cool. More stuff that he can do with that. You can ask uh, for them. Um, LDA analysis. So what is LDA clustering? It's a LaTeX Dirichlet allocation. You can go to Wikipedia. And this is a type of the clustering, which is doing the topic modeling for you. This is a type of the topic modeling. It's without knowing the topic, it can... Um, divides your reviews in the different topics. So this is a code that you have to copy past 
and then you will get the topic for each of your um, for each of your reviews. And that's all. You copied this code, you passed it, and and so I did it. I did it. I checked it because I didn't believe. I said it can be. I mean, I am the professor of the NLP. It can be like that because then finally, what should I do? This is what things that I am explaining, and this is like that. This is just like that. This is the code. Is the code? It's the same code that we saw that I copied, and then it trains it, it do some stuff and this helps you tells you top reviews for topic this is a top reviews for topic uh and this is the top 10 words for the topic it gives you everything with this code you don't know any about this code but you have already all the results and you also can uh ask for more things last three minutes about the web scrapping so the web scrapping can be also doing with the chat GPT. You can ask chat GPT to web scrap the web pages. The thing that, what is the web scrapping? It means to access the context and automatically extract the context from the web page. Let me show you the example. I still have five minutes. So let me show you one very fast example of that. Very simple. A very, very simple example, just a second. Um, this is the web page. Just the, the, uh, the um, this, this page, the trust pilot, it's kind of complicated. Let us do uh, the, it's a simple web page, okay? This is a simple web page that what we want to get, we want to get from this web page, automatically extract from all of these web pages, all of the list of all of the movies that you can see here. How you do that? You manually copy these, 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 it's not copied, it's, it's, it shows you the ads, it's not copied because of it's a link, it's a headache for you to somehow to copy all this stuff. What you should do is to create the script actually to um, extract this data for you. And you don't know how to do that, me neither. No one should know how to do that, but ChatGPT can know how to do that. You can ask ChatGPT explicitly, please extract me this data from this website. And it, he will do that for you. Um, not for all websites, it needs a kind of precision of the instructions how to do that, but um, I can ask the chat GPT to, um, for example, scrap the website. I'm sorry, but the AI language model, I am not able to perform web scrapping as it might violate ethical and legal considerations. Hmm, what can we do? We have to provide more explicit instructions that uh, what I need him to extract. So what I need him to extract, and this is kind of a, a bit complicated stuff, which I, want you, which I want you to show, is that each web page has its own structure. And this is by, by the inspect, by clicking the inspect on our right button, we can always access this. Why I'm explaining that? It's needed to the instruction because otherwise it will be not um, clear. To access any element, we can see how this element was developed because it's, it's not the magic. It's each element has its own class, its own, let's say, um, container. So this big container con contains, all my, uh, it contains all my reviews. I access here in the... Um, access here in, inside because it's in the main, uh, it's my main part. And I try to go here. This is my probably, this is article, this is movies. So look, if I'm clicking here, I'm still inside of this paragraph. In, if I'm clicking here, so this is probably, this is my references. This is my movies that I want to extract. This is Firefly Warriors. This is actually the information that I want to extract. I want to extract this title, 
from this reference from the class scripts list from the class main article that I'm accessing. It's a kind of advanced extraction that I have to provide. And this is workshop about. It's not about that you can ask ChatGPT, do me something and ChatGPT says, you know. It's about the how to write the proper text that the ChatGPT really can give you the answer. So let me, let me copy exactly the, the instruction that we just saw. So this is what. I want to, I want him to access this element and extract me this text. So I go here, I put it here. I mean, yesterday you gave me that. Let me, <laughs> yesterday you gave me this answer. I mean, uh, honestly, uh, you, what, what do you tell me? So, um, what we can do is we can try. to rewrite it. I need you to write the, the Python code to extract uh, the information from the website, locate with a tag, ta -ta 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 -ta. I mean, it means I suppose what we can try to do is that change the default model because the output that I've got, it's actually the code. Why now you somehow you apologize me that much that you don't give me the code, but you will access finally the code. Let's go, go ahead, let's do that. Okay, I need this, this for only for educational purposes. And I, and that's all, let's try this. No, 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 you see. No, I mean, I suppose we can uh, we can start another chat and select another model. I mean, this is, it's obviously due because I do have this code and I already tried this code. So somehow you can access it. What I wanted to tell is that um, this all, we will have another section, uh, another session about actually the research part. The research part, it's much more complex. It is not, so much straightforward as writing the email. There are a lot of um, colors there, but there are some parts particular that uh, ChatGPT can be useful. As my closing words, I want to tell you, I want to show you this, this one last slide, which is, I will present. This is the video of the student. I mean, I suppose now we will be able to see it. This is the student who uh, used the 3D printer to write his homework that wrote ChatGPT, okay? So if you say that it's handwritten, so it means that at least student is writes it. I mean, the student there have so much creativity in using these new AI tools, uh, much more that we do, okay? We have to embrace it. Uh, this is the example. Is it safe to use the chat GPT for your particular task? This is the uh, diagram that we have, that we see here. And this is the kind of decision tree that we uh, by ourselves have to pass through once we do the decision. If we trust the chat GPT for this particular thing that I want to do, uh, my suggestion is if you want to write the email, go ahead, don't need to ask you questions. But if you have more complex stuff as to use it to your research, for example, or which is much worse to some research we, we, in which you are not expert of. So this is, will be very useful for, it's written, does it matter if the output is true? If it doesn't matter for you, if the output is true. I mean, if you generate the email, if the output is not true, you will definitely see it. I mean, uh, this is obviously for you to understand it. But if it's some instructions for them, um, for example, for the medical purposes, which is instruction how you can take the pills, 
which it, it can never be uh, in, generated with the chat GPT, okay? Because it's not the real information, it's generated information. So if, you, if it matters, if the answer is yes, your second question has to be, do I have the expertise to verify the answer? If I do have the expertise, so if I generate the questions about my research in mathematics, I assume that I am the person to verify it. If I want to generate something about the medicine, chemistry, some topic that I am not the expert of, so then your answer is no. And if your answer is no, it's unsafe to use a chat GPT. If your answer is yes, your last question has to be, do you understand that any output is gen that generated by chat GPT, once it generated, it becomes your uh, uh, responsibilities and all the texts that you use a chat GPT, this treats that you an author of these texts and you have to take all the responsibility of usage of these texts. Do you understand this? If your answer is do, if yes, go ahead, use it with your own responsibilities. If your answer is no, don't use it. Be creative, generate your content, try to be as productive as ChatGPT is, and that's all from my side for today. And I'm here for any questions that you have and any words that you can say. We have 15 minutes still, no? Thank you, uh, Tanya. Thank you very much. Uh, well, very um, inspiring uh, your words. Um, is there any any question or maybe on remote? Uh, yeah, Rogero, please. Uh, I will give you the, the mic. This is just because otherwise uh, the online uh, the yeah. online assistant they will not hear you. All right. So. Can can well, I guess they can hear me? So thank you very much for for your for your intervention. Um, I, I was trying to, to start using these also to have some support for research, which we didn't discuss uh, a lot today. It was more about education, but I was curious about, um, I, I tried, like I, I knew some concepts, I knew a couple of concepts that I didn't remember uh, which paper they came from. And so I tried to ask, okay, can you provide me with some sources uh, that, that say, that talk about this topic? And I just put a couple of sentences. And the thing is that uh, ChatGPT, what it does is he just makes up uh, inexistent uh, titles of articles that never existed. They, he always tries to accommodate what you ask for, and it never says no to you, to your request. So it just generates a, a title of an article that makes sense, but it doesn't exist. Isn't it like it's correct. It's dangerous? More, it's or? very correct. No, no, I mean, it's, it's dangerous. It's very much inside these, uh, well, these decision trees that I said to you, but this is uh, the thing that you can verify very easily. You just copy this um, reference that it generates, you go to Google, and if you don't see it uh, in, any, uh, in any platform, it means that it's linked, it doesn't exist, and it's what he's doing, and this is true. So the language model, let me explain. And now I am, my role is a data scientist and my specialization is natural language processing. So let me do a very uh, fast one minute course about the language models. So the language models, the, the manner how they, they've been trained, they know they, um, they are very confident in what, they are, uh, in what they are generating. This is the way that uh, how they have been trained. What means trained? They had a lot of information, they discussed, they, they just have all this knowledge, they accumulated this knowledge and they, uh, mm, they learned to be your assistant, to be, they truly believe that they assist you, they help you and they try to generate as more content as they can. Uh, so this is, this, is the, this is my answer, they don't have access to the um, to the exact links, they generate them, and this is true. 
Some of them, they can be true. I mean, some of them can exist. Few of them. Some of them cannot. Uh, this is the limitation, the current limitation that we have. But the um, thing is that I, 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 I told it like, um, okay, no, this doesn't exist. Okay, I, I was fighting, I was arguing with, with ChatGPT at a certain point. And he was like, okay, yeah, you're right. This was not correct. Let me correct it. And again, another in random title invented from another, but like with a very, like with a APA uh, citation style with all the journal uh, pages and everything, like a proper citation of a paper that never existed. And he was convinced and he was always trying to say, okay, no, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, actually, this is the correct title and the correct uh, source. Yeah, for it. this is it's his nature. It's a limitation that you have to accept. And this is a kind of known limitation. There are plenty of limitations that we still don't know and we will discover. You, you can't use it for that. But so how can we trust it for others? Also, like not, not research, but anyway, like for everything that it says, like data or things that it provides, how can we trust that it's correct? We always have to prove every single thing. I mean, it no, doesn't no, help mean, in terms of time. Uh, for example, the, yeah, it's all, uh, it's all checked. So all the examples that I did today, so the origin of this example that you can check it easily. So all the data that we saw today, it's generated. So it's not real, it's generated and we accept that. So when you ask for the references, you also have to accept that it is generated. So all these data, the tables that we saw, it's generated, it's not real. And once we accept that, and if it's okay for me, I, I didn't ask for the real data because he will say, I will not never provide you the list of the users with their passports because he has not access to. Do, do you understand what I'm talking? So the, it's different. So here, everything I could check. So the code, so the good stuff with the generation of the code that it's very, and it's, it's very easy to check. You just copy, pass it, you run it on your local machine. If it's not works, it's not works. But the good thing is that it works in this case. There are cases when it's not works as for example, for the research. But as I said, it's a different topic, which is, uh, I would say that it's a topic worth speaking about. The research, it's kind of very, very specific knowledge. The advantage of ChatGPT, as I said, it's a general knowledge. For the any topic that you can ask for, it's the same amount of knowledge that he has. I suppose that no one in the earth, the human being, has the same amount of knowledge and the ability of generation the content, but it has its own limitations. So yeah, he, in, in some specific parts, it can be like, like search engines. You can use the API provided when the um, language model can also access the internet. And then it provides you the, the Google links for the papers. So it, existing these APIs that are parts of generating the content, looking for the internet. And this is the thing that probably will solve your problem. Thank you. Uh, in the chat, there's a question. I will give you the, the, the micro if you want to read it. Hola? Sí. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, um, so I think it was an amazing presentation. I love it so much, so thank you very much. Um, my question comes, um, I've been also playing with uh, ChatGPT, and I've seen that there's a limited number of data to work with it, at least the length of it. Um, I don't know if it's any option that you can provide some data to analyze, for example, if you want them to be your assistant in some data to analyze, can you give them a drive to go or can you provide, I don't know, maybe in the paying, I have not paid yet, but I don't know how, how, how big uh, can the system be of your assistant? Um, let me, let me check if I, let me check if I do understand your question. Did you ask uh, if we can provide our data to ChatGPT to analyze it? Is that was the question? Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. You. Uh, I don't. First, I don't recommend you to provide any kind of your data 
to chat GPT directly to analyze it. Okay, first, because your prompt amount is limited. It's, I suppose it's 1,024 characters. I suppose it's like that. So your prompt is limited. So the, the input, this window, let me, so this window that we saw is limited. You can't say the uh, uh, endless message. So if you want, if you have a lot of data, it will not uh, enter here just by the volume. And by the ethical reason, I don't recommend you to provide any personal information. And it's actually written on the when you answer to the chat GPT because they store your conversation because you use they use this conversation to retrain the further models. I don't suggest you to to, to send any real data. There are two options that you can do. You can ask for the uh, chat GPT to tell you the methods that you can use for the analysis on the generated data. You said, as we did, generate me five lines of the exactly same data that you have, but generated data I have. Men, women with, with this uh, characteristic, with this characteristic, what analysis can I do? And chat GPT provides you the instructions, which analysis can you do? With which particular tool can you do this? For example, you use MATLAB for doing this analysis. He will provide you the instruction or the code that you have to use for that. You copy it, and then you do the analysis by yourself. The ChatGPT will not analyze and give you the insights of your data, but it can also help so if you provide the, some problem which enters one uh, prompt. He can give you the insights about this problem. So you can give him the, some theorem or some uh, proposals that you do and you can ask him discuss it or provide me your opinion or um, somehow make analyze it this you can do but if you will speak about the tabulated data as we have in the excel that was my answer did i answer your question very clear thank you very much thank you very much um, well it's about time it's uh, just for last question or if there is any additional question or maybe in the uh, on remote, I don't know. Otherwise, uh, well, let's wait if there is someone there on remote. No, Marta. No. Okay. So in this case, uh, we will conclude. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Tanya. It has been very, very, very. Ah, yeah, there is a uh, last question, just but a very short one. With the uh, answer for. Can you scrub? Can you scrap uh, with the premium account? You have the premium account. We do, we do. This is a premium account. Yes, this is a premium. We can scrap with the normal account. This is for sure. I did this yesterday. I mean, it's for sure, one hundred percent. This is somehow probably we need to start the conversation. Or the thing is that we need to change the model probably for that. Um, this is I, I don't know if the output is different, but I did this with my account, which is completely free, and it allows you to do that. And it's. Uh, it's just because that it creates the code. Once again, it generates you the code. You put this code to your Python editor, you execute this code, and then you get all the titles from the web page, which is magically appears to you, and you can copy past it without any effort. And this is something that you definitely could do. It's uh, online demo issues. OK. Uh, well, uh, time flies. So we have been for two hours in this. Uh, we have covered almost everything, uh, but uh, you promised in your uh, index a, a lot of things, and I think that there is something missing, uh, maybe for next day. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, and uh, pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.